waiting for this little Jap exterminator, and I was giving it some extra special service. Hey, bud. She's okay. Spin her along. Let's go. Come on, Red. already dated up. How are things going at the driving? Oh, all right. But I'd much rather be working at the plant with you. Gosh, I wish my application would hurry up and go through. So do I. I'm hoping that more of you gals will come in so we guys can do some of that frontline stuff ourselves. Step on it, will you? I can't breathe in these close quarters. I'm allergic to them now. Okay, boys. In a hurry, darling? I should be. I've been marking time for three years. Step on it, will you, Larkin? What's the idea of cutting in on us like that? What do you want the whole Give me the insurance company's name. Oh, well, what good's that going to do? Well, now I'm certain everything will turn out all right. If the insurance company doesn't take care of you, then that's the time to be upset. Okay, Larkin, let's go. Say goodbye to the boy, Nikki. Goodbye, Mr. Bill Barry. Goodbye, Mr. Barry. Take it easy, Mary. They're insured. Another one? As flat as yesterday's beer. Well, what do we do now? Oh, never mind. May I have the next dance with you? I want to try to get a rumba. Uncle Sam says conserve your tires, drive slowly, stay under 40, and buy war stamps well, and war bonds. I'll call Freddie and have him tow us in. Sounds like a B-25. <laughs> yeah, to drop one right on my noggin. Hi, Mary. How'd you make out with the insurance company about getting tires? They offered me $25, said that's all they were worth. What? Why, $25 wouldn't buy a rubber band. Wait a minute. Know who that is? Tony Gillen. Why, that's the yeah, man. Yeah, the big shot who said everything will be okay. Well, I'm going visiting. Everything isn't okay. Well, Tom, are you glad Mr. Gillen's back? Yes, miss. He's a good boss. And I hate to leave him. Leave him? I've enlisted in the army. You have? I'm going to report tomorrow. Well, that's wonderful. But uh, what does Mr. Gillen think about that? I don't know. I haven't told him yet. Excuse me. Mr. Gillen's apartment. Who? Bill Barry. Just a moment, please. Bill Barry? Oh, yes, yes. Have him come up. Oh, uh, send him up, please. I want to see Mr. Gillen, please. It's very important. Yes, step right in, please. Thanks. Hello. Oh, hello. Have you been to the insurance company? Yeah, but it didn't do much good. Oh, you suppose you could hurry him up? I, I've got to get to work. I will, Mr. Barry. <laughs> Thanks. What do you do? Oh, I'm at the arms plant, testing machine guns. Oh, that's grand. You're really doing your bit. You know, someday they'll be handing out decorations to fellows like you. Well, the only decoration I want is to know that we're turning out the best we can. Won't you sit down? <laughs> Thanks, but I haven't much time. Then why wait? What do you want? 
It's about the accident. What about the accident? Well, your insurance company wouldn't go for more than $25. That sounds about right. Your car wasn't worth much more than that. Well, it's the tires I'm talking about. You can't buy them. The only way we can get tires is to buy a used car, any kind, as long as it has rubber on it. What, is this a new racket or something? Buy you a car? Hmm. Did you say you can't buy tires? <laughs> That's right. Say, what? Well, of course, Tony. The government says nobody can buy tires. They're restricted. Oh, you mean it's like prohibition, only this time they're going to make it stick, huh? Yeah. Where have you been? Pearl Harbor isn't a girl's name, you know. Okay, be the wise guy. Hey, now, wait a minute. You said if your insurance company didn't fix it up that you... I don't care what I said. I'm saying now, get out. Well, look, I get don't out. see what... Please, come on. Okay, but what about the tires? Let me see what I can do. Where can I get in touch with you? Oh, gate three at the United Arms plant. Fine. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Well, I haven't heard that voice of yours in a long time. You use a well-worn phrase, something's cooking. Yes. Now I, I am afraid to tell them I'm leaving. I have to have the afternoon off. I got a few sticks of furniture to sell and my car. Car? With tires? Yes. Tony, Tom's selling his car. Look, how about giving it to that Barry fellow? Okay, we'll keep him out of my way. Wait a minute. Did you say Tom's car? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You see, I have enlisted in the Army. The Army? Well, congratulations, my boy. Tom, I don't know how I'm going to get along without you, but then, well, everybody has to do their bit, so uh, you'll do mine, huh? Uh -huh. Congratulations. <laughs> nice to see you. Until after the war, will they be surprised? <laughs> Here's the setup, Bandy. Watch it close. The Lakes Trucking Company routes through here, see? They're going to deliver two loads of rubber to the Alvin Aeroplane Company. I want that rubber. Get rid of the trucks and the men. I don't care how you do it. Maybe over the bridge. Just so it doesn't smell of hijacking. Do you get it? Sure. Okay. Hi, Tony. 680 more tonight. Good. You better get rolling here doing Detroit. Right, boss. Boy, we're really going to have an enterprise. Well, I'll see you on the retread. <laughs> see, boss. We got more tires now, and the Salvation Army has donuts. And now you're going to make some more? Now you're going to get rid of them. You can't stick a tire in a guy's head pocket and... Now, wait a minute. Say... Stop worrying about it, Larkin. We're going to sell them legitimate. I don't savvy. We'll have customers crying to buy them. Hello, Angel. Come on in. Boss, you are now the new owner of 19 used car lots, and by Wednesday I'll have you 50 more. They're giving them away. Gee, boss, I get it. You mean a car with decent rubber is what? You're a genius! Yes, and I got brains, too. Come on, I'll show you guys something. Hello, Maxie. Hello, boss. It's all set. Turn it over. How do you like it? It's terrific. One second a new tire you can't sell, the next second a used tire. It's colossal. <laughs> it's big, too. Oh, it's gigantic. Come on, boys. I'll show you something else. How's it look, Frank? Feel like a cattle rustler on a double beach at changing brands like this. Yeah, but there's more hay in it. <laughs> Hello, Arthur. Hello, Mr. Gillen. 
We molded four tires out of the first batch, but we cut the rubber too much. No resistance to wear. However, I think I've hit upon the proper formula now. A definite resiliency and enough mileage in it to last a few thousand miles. Mm, good, 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 fine. Like fine. cutting the scotch in the old days. Just put enough of the real stuff in to give it the flavor. Yes. You don't want that, no, Arthur. I suppose you're right, Mr. Gilman. Hmm. This isn't a kindergarten. Stop making those rubber rings. We've got work to do. Now cut it out, Dumbo. Good rubber in a long time. Want a demonstration? No, I'll take it. I guess these days you can sell cars without motors as long as they have tires. Yeah. How about some more sugar, Mary? Saboteur, you have had your quota for the week. <laughs> well, all right, stir it up with your finger. I won't tell the FBI. X three, no more cars. Army moves on rubber. Hey, X three, pay for here. Hey, kid. Paperson? Yeah. There you are. Thank you. How'd Brooklyn make up? <laughs> Them bums. <laughs> See, look at these ads here. Uh, best prices paid for cars with or without tires. <laughs> What's that got to do with Brooklyn? Well, Mary's car with no tires is jacked up in the garage. No good that way. Let's sell it. Yeah, yeah, why not? Hey, Mary. Oh, wait a minute. Don't say anything to her until after it's done. You know, like a woman, she never wants to let go of anything. Oh, uh, what about the ownership card? Oh, it's in my name. <laughs> we bought it together. Did you call, sir? Is the service satisfactory? Nope. It's too light and there's a crowd. <laughs> Got it out, Romeo. We're in a hurry, Mary. Gotta go. Big business. Freddy, finish your milk. Oh. Go on, drink it. The tip. Don't forget, Freddy, don't drive fast. You promise. Okay, sis. I only hope this jalopy remembers. <laughs> hey, hold on. You don't need me. I'll go home with Mary. See you later. Okay. Always in a hurry. Fifty bucks is tops. There ain't enough rubber on it to make an eraser. Okay, it's a deal, mister. Say, um, uh, what do you do with them without tires? We count them at night. That cheap stuff is old-fashioned. <laughs> hey, babe. Unhook her and pull her in back. Come on. Okay. Say, what about selling me one of these tires? I'm riding on canvas. Ah, uh, nothing doing, kid. There's plenty of good rubber in them, and we need them. Well, just thought I'd ask. Say, why not sell him one of those? Get ten bucks. Help me out. Hey, kid. Got one for you. Ambulance call Hazelhurst and Finley.
Hello? Yes, yes, this is Mary Dale's home. What? Where? Thank you. Mary. Fred's been hurt. How? Where is he? Is it oh, serious? Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't worry. They didn't say how badly. Oh. I still can't believe it. Just a couple of hours ago, he was a fine kid. Tire must have blown. I turned him over. Look at those skid marks. He never had a tire like that. It's new. Look at that. Falls apart when you touch it. Yeah, some of that phony hot rubber. It's murder having one of those on your car. Yeah, and it's murder selling them. Look at that rubber. It's like mush. You know, there's more to this than just Fred and that one tire. Every day the papers are telling us what's happening. Where'd he get it? That's what we've got to find out. Oh, quit playing copper. This is a job for the police, not for you or me. Keep your ears open, screwball. Bill went to the DA and... How oh, are you telling, Bill? Well, he thanked me and said that the police and the FBI are working on cases like this. Hundreds of them all over the country. But he also said these days every one of us has a job to do. And that's to help them run them down. Boy, I'm right with you. The other day, a guy tried to hustle me a pair of tires. <laughs> Still spitting his teeth out. <laughs> sure, I need rubber, but it's better to have a blowout on Broadway than on the battlefield. Well, listen, fellas. Making somebody pay for this is going to be a tough job to tackle. But I've got an idea. Come here. Tony, this rack is better than having a key to the mint. Look at this one. This caddy with broken down shoes I bought for a C-note. Put tires on, we get five bills. <laughs> yeah, just like Dollar Day. Hauling in the dough. And if we watch ourselves, we'll be sitting pretty after the war. What's this? Say, these are the kids that put us in business. Hmm. Police are investigating sources of new unbranded tire whose blowing out resulted in the accident. The tread was manufactured of a rubber-like composition mark with a V. A v. Rubber-like composition. Yeah, that V sounds like the first batch already ran off before we hit the right cutting. Yeah, he said he made about four of them. They're over at ABC. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing, boss. Nothing. Now stop lying. What do you know about it? Oh, I didn't think anything would happen. Uh, the kid wanted a tire, and I sold him one for ten bucks. Get over to ABC and get rid of them. Burn them. Are they still there? Yeah. Uh, for a saw buck, you'd put us on the spot, wouldn't you? Fred, how many fellows have you got? All I need to cover the south side. Told the ship to bow and we're raring to go. My department will stake out downtown. We're all set to go, Bill. Good. Now, you've got to keep your eyes open. And above all, don't let anybody get hep. Every parking lot, every used car place, and every gas station. And the minute you see a V-tread on the tire, we move in. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, come on. Let's go. Guy is still hanging around. See anything you like, bud? Not yet, still looking. How about this one? Look at the rubber, it's a steel. Not bad. Not bad? Take a look at that rubber. 250, it's like winning a bank bank. 250? What is this, a stick up? The girlfriend of a pal of mine working with me at the arms plant owned this heap. She only paid a hundred bucks for it. So what? Got more experience now. Customer wants to see you. Be back in a minute. I don't get the angle. He's been hanging around for three days. There's a guy been nosing around now a lot too. Where's some kind of a button with a number on it? <laughs> Looks like a walking price tag. A well, factory work is bad. Say, wait a minute. When I was making collections over the ABC, there was some fella giving that place the gander. Hey, maybe there's some. 
Oh, I get that. Spiller, what is it? Well, he said, uh, said one of the crates on the lot belonged to the, to the gal or some guy he worked with at the arms plant. Arms plant? That doesn't help us. What kind of a car? It was an Auburn, 28, convertible sedan. What was that girl driving, the one we hit? You know, the one whose brother? You're right. Oh. Name's Bill Barry. He had a lot of nerve crashing into me. He might have said that FBI knocked us off in Cleveland last week. And it's just a piece of luck that we kept our skirts clean. I'm not taking any chances on a repeat performance. Hello, Nicky. Oh, well, honey, I've been up to my ears. Oh, well, we've got a date tonight, haven't we, kid? Sure. Yeah, I'll be there. And listen, I've got a little job that only you can do. Right. See you there. I tell you, Nicky, it's a perfect setup. The boy hasn't done anything to you. Anything you're certain of. I'm not a gambling man, Nicky. But if I was that kid, I'd try and find out where those V tires came from. The police won't go further than checking treads, and they'll hit a blind alley. But it wasn't their pal that was buried, it was his. I won't do it. Tony, about this rubber business, have you ever thought what you're doing? Sure I know what I'm doing. But you don't have to worry about it. You do this, honey. And it's worth a big bracelet to you, and you can pick it out yourself. Hmm? Here's his address. Got it from the insurance company. except being stuck. Do you know anything about cars? Oh, enough to make that jalopy Mr. Gillen gave us run like a top. What's the trouble? I wish I knew. Hey, I smell gas. The carburetor's probably flooded. I'll pull the throttle out. There. Let it sit a couple of minutes. I never expected to run into you again. I mean like this. <laughs> Neither did I. A lot's happened since we last saw you. Mary's kid brother was killed. Well, I'm sorry. Some rat sold him a bum tire. It's going to be the worst deal he ever made. What do you mean, Bill? Well, we're after him. And when we get him, we'll... Well, you'll we'll find out that the rubber in that tire will stretch him to 20 years in Alcatraz. Oh, you can try it. Can I drive you someplace? Oh, sure thing. I'm on my way to work. The bus stop's about three blocks down. I'll pay you back by taking you right to the factory. Hey, thanks. Ah, stop moping over that kid buddy of yours. He ain't the only guy what's in the army. Bill can't figure how Nicky can con him into this spot. Well, you ain't had a look at Nicky in a long time. She could con me into any spot, especially a cozy little chateau like this. <laughs> I always meet Red on the bus. He works with me. <laughs> he wonder what happened. Bill. Hmm? Nothing. Never mind. Look, I've forgotten something. I I'm terribly sorry. Something I really have to do. Oh, well, think nothing of it. Just drop me off the next corner and I'll catch a bus. <laughs> Thanks for the lift this far anyway. Here she comes. What happened? Where's the chump? Missed him. I'll have to try again. He left before I got there. Well, tomorrow's another day. Well, tomorrow I'm going to cover all the gas stations on the east side. Say, I've hung around that used car a lot until I'm starting to take root. Same with all the other guys. Yeah. Hi, Red. Missed you on the bus. <laughs> I got a lift. Any news about that tire? Nope. Say, you remember Mary's car? I saw it at a used car place. They're asking 250 bucks for it. You saw it? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure, except now it's got good rubber on it. Wait a minute. You mean all four tires? I'm not thinking of buying it back, are you? No. I wonder where they got those tires. They only had V-treads. Yeah, but they didn't. 
Looks like we're on a wild goose chase. And we thought the golden eggs. Maybe you're right, but I hate to admit it, though. Well, we did everything we could. Attention, all employees. This plant has just received an official communication from the United States government commending us on the quality and the production of our 50 caliber guns turned out by Department 4. They were responsible for shooting down 10 German Messerschmitts over Berlin. Now you can cheer if you want to. And the Navy Department has awarded us the E-Flag for efficiency. Now, no more cheering. Let's go back to our benches and show them that we deserve it. That's all, boys. If I thought it all out, we've got to keep at it until we find the guy who's doing this rubber pitch. And I know all about your flat feet. Bill, I'm a good mechanic, but as a detective, I stink. Give my dogs a break and call in the FBI. It's more fun reading about it. Those flyers who dropped the Messerschmitts didn't sit back waiting to read about it. I got a hunch I'm getting hooked again. But so long as I don't feel a point, I'll play along. <laughs> then you're hooked solid. Tomorrow you and I are going car shopping. Again? Those side walls. That's new rubber with a shine taken off. It's getting hot. Well, warm. Anyway, I'm going to chance a long shot. Maybe they're selling tires here. Hi, bud. Anything under the hood? Ain't it a new baby? How about a couple of tires without the car? Hey, where do you think you guys are? We're selling cars here, and that's all. All right, all right. Throttle down. A fellow of mine bought one here, that's all. Not here, brother. Who did he say he bought it from? I'll have to ask him. Let's go. Okay, Bill. Of course I've seen him, but he's always had somebody with him. I can't just spin a web and have him jump in. I don't care what you have to do. I've started something, and I'm going to finish it. We've got to get rid of him. Tony, you're just looking for trouble. It's only a hunch of yours anyway that he's tabbing us. Listen, the last time I sloughed off a hunch of mine, it put me in the pen. And I'm going to... What are you doing here, Curly? You're supposed to be in one of the lots. I was at a lot, boss. The ABC. A couple of birds came in and gave it the ones over. And to top it, they know about that tire. The one that was sold by Butch. And here's the payoff. They know somebody who knows Butch. Ah, uh, somebody was ripping you. Or are you playing an angle? What the guy looked like? Well, there was two of them. Two of them? Yeah. And the guy who gave me the business was about as tall as you. Not bad looking. About 20. And the other guy called him Bill. Just a hunch, huh? Well, I can't figure it. Well, guess I better get out of town for a while. Yeah. And don't stop to pack. Have a nice trip. <sighs> Thanks, Tony. Too bad about Butch, eh, Dumbo? Sorry, ma'am. Defense Factory District. You'll have to dim your lights. Well, good night, Bert. Come on, Bill. See you tomorrow. Hi, Mary. Mary, I think we've hit the trail. The right trail. I just know it. 
It's like being up at bat and knowing you're going to count the next one out for a homer. Oh, darling, be careful. I'm afraid for you. Well, I'd be sore if you weren't. Oh, you can check your worries. Tomorrow I'm going to meet the bunch down at that lot, and we're going out there and rip that fifth column right off the page. And another reason why you shouldn't worry is, well, they say a guy in love has a charmed life. Sure wish we could step out tonight, but I've got a lot of stuff. Pretty soon I'll be seeing blueprints in my sleep. I'm jealous. Imagine competing with the blueprint. Yeah, and you ought to see some of their curves. <laughs> Good night, darling. Don't work too late. I won't. Good night, Ken. See you tomorrow. Oh, that light fuse again. Like living in a continual blackout. Mm -hmm. I have some matches around here someplace. Light? Take it easy, buddy. Yeah, we just want to talk to you. Sit down, Bill. You look like a smart fellow, Bill. Why don't you keep your nose out of other people's business? Keep it clean. It'll stay in shape longer. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if you don't, you and I are just wasting time, Bill. But if you do, you can save yourself a lot of trouble. Smoke? Lay off your snooping around, Bill. It isn't healthy. I guess that's all. Guess we don't have to draw you any pictures to show you what we mean? Do we, Bill? <coughs> That's just a sample. A very small sample of what you can expect. In case you think you might be dreaming, have some light. Boy, did he let me have it. Sure, huh? <laughs> it sure is. Look, fellas, not a crack to marry about this, hmm? No sense in getting her upset. <laughs> but believe it or not, the next time somebody offers me a light, I... Don't forget the duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, fellas, that's how it ends. It means that Mule and I touched it off of that used car lot. <laughs> it also means that there might be a little rough housing. So if any of you guys want to sit this one out, you can. The only way I'll sit this one out is on top of one of those racketeers. Hey, how about tipping off the cops? What? Now, well, I've got something to pay back and with interest. Well, fellas, what's the word? I'm with you. Let's tear them apart. OK, we'll pick up the rest of them on the way. Let's go. Right behind you. Cars for sale here. I don't see any cars for sale. I don't see any cars at all. Those people are out of business. Well, who own the lot? ABC Company, I guess. ABC Company? You can't kick the daylights out of the alphabet. You can if you find out who's behind it. There's my name and address. It's ten bucks in it if you find out where they went. I'm heading for the city hall. There must be a name on the selling license for this place. Thanks, bud.
Oh, it's Charlie. Okay, Charlie. So your brain trust has thought I was getting cold feet washing up the ABC lot, huh? Well, a mob just stepped into it to clean us out. Are you sure all those cars are on the road? Yeah, they're a long way out of town by now. Good. Those buses around would be waving a signal flag. Now, the spark plug of that mob is a fellow I'm sick and tired of. Did you ever hear the name Bill Barry? Yeah. Too often. When? Tonight. Get Locke and the drive you and no more conversation. I'll be at the club with Nicky until the job is done. Good evening, Lala. Good evening, Mr. Gillen. I wonder if my watch is right. What time of you? 11.5, sir. 11.5. That's right. Thanks. Some girls are born lucky, are on the right side of the street. Hello, Scotty. Hi, Mr. Gillen. <laughs> the Moulin Rouge may have the best chef in town, but you're still my favorite bartender. The way this man crushes mint without bruising it is out of this world. Thank you, sir. And what'll it be tonight, Mr. Gillen? Two French 75s and go light on the cream de mint. That's only for coloring anyhow. It doesn't add a thing to the kick. Say, Scotty. Yes, sir. Aren't you a bit fast? If you're referring to the time, no, sir. <laughs> Tony, you're building an alibi. <laughs> Smart girl. Fanny's taking care of that Barry lad tonight. If anything goes wrong, I know from nothing. Have some of these. They're good. Just enough butter. Try this. Fine. Just right, Scotty. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. Be back in a minute, Tony. I have a little headache. Well, Scotty will fix it up for you. You can't powder my nose, can you? You must tell me. Nick, Nicky, Nicky, Opera. I never knew a woman to powder her nose that fast. <laughs> Noses are coming shorter these days. War measure. What are you doing here? I'll tell you in the car. Come on. They're turning around. They gotta go over the bridge. I'll get them there. Why would you want me to turn around and go this way? Bill, you can't go home. Why not? Well, that girl, Nikki, telephoned me. She was terribly excited. behind him. Oh! You all right? Yes, I'm, I'm all right. You didn't miss by much, look. Scotty, check and pencil. Yes, sir. Hmm, 12.20. Imagine wasting an evening sitting in a bar. I seem to spend a weekend here. Hey, you are, Scotty. I'm tired, Tony. If you don't mind, I'd like to go home. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of it. The evening's young yet. Come on up to my place for a while, Nicky. I thought I heard a click, like a light switch.
Why did you lie? Lie? Well, now, really, Tony, is that so unusual for a woman? What are you talking about? You telephoned from the club. Who did you call? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. It, uh, it wasn't important. I called my apartment. I uh, expected a package. I bought a dress today. You'll love it. You know, uh, they're making them much shorter now. I used to tell whether or not you were lying. This time, you're going to tell me. Coffee, sir. Tommy. When did you get back? I'm on 24 hours leave. I thought I'd surprise you. You certainly did that. Turn around, let me look at you. Oh, wonderful. You're proud of it, aren't you? Yes, miss. Sometimes I have trouble keeping my chest down. It always puffs up, and sometimes it feels like singing. Well, that's great, Tom, but not right now, see? I've got to say, though, that your coffee is still the best. Thank you, Mr. Gillen. The boys at the camp agree with you. Bill, don't you think you should have told the police about Nikki? No, not yet. Nikki won't spill to the police, but she will to me. Well, I'm going over and see her. Oh, darling, I'm frightened. Oh, now you just sit right there and don't worry. Bill, I love you. <laughs> that makes us even. Yeah, now, you better say that until I come back. With my shield, they're on it. Seems funny, Tommy, you serving us in that uniform. But you look great in it. Better than a white coat, and I'm proud of you. Thank you, Mr. Gillen. You know, there was a time when all a uniform meant to me was a Western Union boy or a postman. But it's certainly different now. No, miss. It's the same. Except we're all wearing the same uniform and in the same fight. How do I feel when the bullets fly? <laughs> You'll probably find yourself a better a couch and dive under it. No doubt. <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. Gillen's apartment. Who? Just a moment. Mr. Bill Barry downstairs. Is he alone? Is Mr. Barry alone? Yes, sir. Send him up. No, Tony. Don't worry, I'll take care of him. Send him up. Uh, you may send him up, please. Tom, clean out these dishes and wait in the kitchen. I may need you later. Tony, please give him a chance. Why? Because it's just that he isn't like us. Coming from anybody else, that would be an insult. Wait a minute. I'll answer it. Nicky, gosh, I'm glad you're here. What do you want, Mr. Barry? Yes, what do you want? Hey, are you kidding? What is this, a gag? You know what I want, both of you. Don't tell me you've worn out your tires already. Well, I, I'm sorry, but we haven't another car to give you. Now, listen here. I want to know who's making that phony rubber, and and who's using me for a punching bag, and, and who's pumping lead at me. Pumping lead? Yeah, and I don't care how big he is or who he knows. That's big talk from a small timer. <laughs> sure, sure, I know. I'm just a little guy. Well, a drop of water isn't so big, but a whole lot of them makes a kind of way that's pretty tough to duck. And that guy, whoever he is, is going down for the third time and for good. But you've got to tell me who he is. What makes you think I know? Because you're Tony Gillen. And if all I've read about you is true, you know. Anyway, if you don't, why'd you tell Mary that... <gasps> Tony! Shut up! Call the warehouse on Horton Street. Horton 2300. Hurry up. Is the boss in business again? Yes. Rubber. Hot rubber. Hot rubber? I don't believe it. Oh, yes. He jumped on the bandwagon just as soon as it got rolling. Yes, and I'm going to keep it rolling. But, Mr. Gillen, you can. This is not like selling Alfie or hijacking it from another in the same racket. We're in war. Well, then you fight it. I will. And men are doing it right now, and dying all over the world. That's what they're doing, so we can have a better life. I'm not talking to you like Tom, the Tom you knew. I'm talking to you like just one of the millions of fellows like me. Maybe some with whiter skin, and maybe some with darker skin. But all knowing what the war's about, or trying to find out. And ready, well, ready to die for any of us, or all of us. Tom is right. You thought I was getting soft, but I wasn't. It was just the feeling that this was all wrong, that you were all wrong, that everything you've ever done has been for you and nobody else. So I'm jumping on a bandwagon, too. Only it's his bandwagon. Listen to her. 
Maybe some of our men could win the victory if help came to them in time. On rubber, airplanes on rubber, trucks on rubber, and tanks on rubber. Tony, I'm going to tell you something. I warned that boy in there you were after him. I thought I did it because, well, they were a couple of nice kids like I was once. I didn't want to see them hurt. But now I know it was more than that. Tommy just put it into words. Please figure out some way to clear this up. You're smart, Tony. Open that door and let him out. If you don't, I will. Now, you listen to me. I've been listening to you. The only thing I'm interested in is a big wad of dough. That's the only kind of freedom I go for. That flag-waving stuff may be okay for you, but not for me, see? And guys like me usually wind up on their feet. But double crosses like you, usually on your backs with your bellies full of lead. Are you mad? Put that gun away. No, you're not going, Mr. Gillen. All right, Tom. Okay. Tommy. After him, I think warehouse Fountain is uh, Hurry, go after the address. What's the address? Uh, number one sixteen Horton Street. No, one sixteen Horton Street. Operator. Send an ambulance to apartment D8. Crystal Towers Apartments. Yes, there's a man been shot. Hurry. I said for help, you'll be okay. Uh, I'd be all right. Go. Uh. Pack them in good and tight. One, sixteen, button. Darling, be careful.
took you so long, Angel? Well, I got here as fast as I could. What, what goes? I'm going, and so is she, but in two different directions. I took care of that Barry guy, and Nikki blazed a cannon at Tom. Take a couple of boys up to my apartment and wrap up Barry. You'll find him in the closet. Leave Tom there and don't touch the gun. The police will check the fingerprints. And dump her where the cops will find her. Dickie. Hello, Bill. You surprised to see me? <laughs> you bet I am. What do you know about handling a machine gun? Are you kidding? 